Hey everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out my video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever works for you. So I wanted to go for my January TBR. I have a bunch of books that I am super excited to read. So I've been working on kind of scheduling this out based on my 2018 reading goals. I'll link that video in the description box down below because there are a couple of things that I want to make sure that I'm doing each month or every other month or that I want to get a head start on just in case I have to push something off for a month. Then I have a couple months to cushion that. So the first book I want to try and read in January is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I plan on rereading this series throughout 2018 and I have 10 copies to choose from for <laughs> to choose from to read along with the audiobook. There's an audiobook that I have that is read by Stephen Fry, I believe it is, and I absolutely love his voice. So I'm going to read along to that probably with my Slytherin copy. We'll see which one I end up picking. To coordinate with one of my other 2018 goals, I want to start off reading Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. I'm probably going to watch one of the plays after I finish this too, just because there's been so many good adaptations of so many of his plays, and I'm sure I've never seen a ton of them. So I really only watch the ones with like David Tennant and, or like the cast of Harry Potter in it, but... I also plan on picking up The Valiant early on in January. This is the first in a series by Leslie Livingston where there is a female gladiator where she's essentially kidnapped from northern England, I think it is, and brought down to Rome to be a slave. But she was a princess and a warrior in her former home. But there are some family drama that keeps coming up. This sequel to this, The Defiant, is coming out in late January. So I want to read this, refresh my memory, and then pick up The Defiant as soon as I get my copy. Once again, coordinating with my 2018 goals, I want to start reading The Kiss of Deception by Mary Pearson. This is book one of The Remnant Chronicles, and I absolutely love this trilogy. I plan on rereading it this year. And this book, I mean, like, I know the ending won't get me the same way it did before. So I'm curious to see if I still love it the same way I do now. And, you know, see, I just love the romance and I want to be ready for when Dance of Thieves comes out later on in the year. This book was on my December TBR, but I actually didn't get my copy until the end of December, so I couldn't really do anything. The Power by Naomi Alderman. The very brief summary is women gain the ability to electrocute with their hands. So it switches up what our society's, you know, gender hierarchy is. So women have the power. I've heard it's amazing. It's one of a bunch of awards. It's been mentioned on like every channel and blog and website that I can think of. And I just need to read it. I really hope I love it the same way that some people are. So I don't go back to work until January 8th. But my plan is to pick up Black Soul by Nicole Casterman before I go back. This doesn't have an audiobook, so I can't really help myself when I'm gone back to work. I want to read this. I really enjoy Black Hearts, and I'm anticipating a lot of pirate and racing and, you know, morphing of personalities into Blackbeard. This is the sequel, obviously, to Black Hearts. This is the prequel story of how Blackbeard becomes Blackbeard and, you know, to the name and legend that we know today. Another one of my goals for 2018 is to reread the Outlander series and finally get to the Lord John series. So I am starting off the series fresh. I'm going from the beginning and I'm starting with Outlander. I have three copies of this book. I think I'm going to read the anniversary edition. I've never actually read this copy that I have and I'm just so excited to revisit this world. I love it. Every single time I go back, it's just, it warms my heart and yeah, I'm just super excited. If you don't know what Outlander is, oh, how do you explain Outlander? It's post-World War II, well, very post-World War II. And a woman, an English woman and her husband go on a honeymoon to Scotland and she time travels by accident and to Jacobite Scotland. And at that time period, England wasn't super popular. To be honest, England's not super popular today in certain parts of Scotland. But <laughs> she is an English woman in the middle of Jacobite Scotland right before the rebellion. And it is a very different world between World War II era and this era. So you see some stark contrast. There's lots of romance. It's definitely an adult book. There's some very adulty scenes. And you meet my book husband, Jamie Fraser, in here. So yeah, definitely read it or give it a try if you haven't. I plan on rereading Glitter by April and Pike this month. I absolutely love it this book. I talk about it all the time. I can't help it. It's just so underhyped. The cover is beautiful too. And I plan on reading this to refresh my memory because Shatter comes out in February. So I am ready and I will be picking up Shatter as soon as my copy gets to me. This book, it's kind of summarized on the back as Marie Antoinette and Breaking Bad. There is a tech company that has bought the Palace of Versailles and the tech company staff, people that live there, 
essentially reenact the French aristocracy before the French Revolution. The main character is acting out Marie Antoinette and she is trying to get out. She's trying to save money to escape. And to do that, she starts selling a drug in the palace called Glitter and things evolve and escalate very quickly and the ending blew me away and broke my heart and I'm so so excited for the sequel. I really 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 want to try to get to this book this month. The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. This is a book about women fist fighting in like medieval-y kind of well I don't think medieval maybe like renaissance-y kind of times. There's two women that don't from the sounds of it are not from super privileged backgrounds. One of them's from a brothel another one's from a community hit very hard by smallpox. So they, for some reason, I don't know how it happens, I'm just super curious about it now, they learn that they're good at fist fighting from the sounds of it, so I am just super, super curious about this book. I actually may try to start this book at the end of December. It may roll over into my January, which is totally fine. The Revolution of Marina M by Janet Finch. This is a book about a woman who is in a bit more of a privileged situation, but she joins a revolution that starts in Russia after, you know, around World War I before the end of World War II. Russia went through this massive socialist upheaval right at the end of World War I, and the Tsar abdicates, and chaos ensues. So I'm really curious. I've heard really, really good things about this book. It is a thick book for sure, but I am a massive fan of anything Russia, and I am just super, super excited to give this a go. Starting on another Sebastian de Castell series, I plan on reading The Traitor's Blade. This is book one of the Grey Coats, I believe it is, series. It is I think four or five books total. I am just so curious about this. I've seen like super detailed descriptions that I get lost in and then I've seen super vague ones. But the gist is the king who has been murdered by his, you know, aristocrats and, you know, people who were supposed to support him but really just wanted his spot. He has been killed and he has left something for his grey coats, his elite knights, to try and figure out and discover. So they go a quest in from the sounds of it. And I absolutely loved Sebastian de Castell's Spellslinger book. So while I wait for my copy of Shadow Black to show up, I am starting his other series and I am so excited for this. Since my copy has arrived, I can put it off no longer. I am reading The Rebels of Gold by Elise Kova. This is the third and final book in the Loom Saga trilogy. I absolutely loved this series and once I'm done it, maybe I'll reread the whole series by the end of the year because I absolutely love this series. It's so 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 cool and imaginative and fun and just like so like sucks you in kind of thing. There's guilds and dragons, but not what we think of as dragons. And there's a lot of politics and very, like, gruesome hierarchy and so much betrayal and sexy time, too. So I am just so excited to see where this goes. I'm hoping, based on the image, too, we get more Florence, who is one of the, she's kind of a main character, kind of a side character. She's so freaking adorable, though, and I love her. And I'm just so excited to see how this ends. Just because I know the third book is already scheduled to come out, I think it's in September. September of this year, so it's really not that far away. I want to read The Girl in the Tower, so I'm ready for The Witch of Midnight or The Winter Witch or something like that. I don't remember what the third book. I'll put the, the title there. I'm just so curious to see where this is going. The Bear and the Nanny Girl could have left as a standalone, but I really enjoyed the world, so I'm super curious to see where this goes. This follows the story of Vasilia, and she was the main character in The Bear and the Nightingale, and there's like Russian rural life and some of the hierarchies and just like kind of zombie things and magic and it's just so interesting and so creative and it was just so refreshing and something I had never read before and I and I so thoroughly enjoyed it and now I'm getting ready to pick this one up. I really really want to read it. The Life and Lit Facebook group is doing actually a pretty cool event this month. It's Holocaust Remembrance Day in late January. So they're doing an event that throughout the month they want you to try and read stories that take place during this time period or that comment on it. It can be fiction or non-fiction. I think I may try and pick up a couple other books kind of throughout the month. I'm not totally sure which ones that kind of work with that. But for sure, I know that I am picking up The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturb. I'm not saying that right, I don't think. So uh, it's based on the true story of a prisoner from Auschwitz, which was the most deadly concentration camp. And she's trying to save literature, which I find immensely interesting just because of all the book burnings and the book bannings that were going on. As well as like, if you're a prisoner, you're just trying to survive. And, you know, my concept of surviving is just, I've never ha gone through that. So I'm so curious to see, you know, what people cling to in that moment. I could personally understand of, 
of gra grasping onto something like literature and just the things that it can do for you. So I'm just so, so curious about this. I am continuing my way through the Air Awakened series and picking up book four, Water's Wrath. I'm also probably going to try and pick this one up before I go back to work in the second week of January, just because, like I said, there's no audiobook, so work might slow me down from being able to get through this. And I can't really say the summary without spoiling books one, two, and three. There's a war going on, and there was a romantic, like, ripping your heart out thing at the end of Earth's End. So I just, I don't know where this is going to go. I'm so, so curious about this. I'm really excited to read it. I'm also waiting for my copy from the library to show up of The City of Brass. I honestly don't know how to say the author's name, but it's like by S.A. Shevowski? Chuck Broth? I apologize, but there's no way I'm going to be able to figure that one out. I don't know a ton about this book. I've just seen it a lot all over. I know it was one of the books in the Book of the Month box. All I know about this book, it kind of sounds a little bit like Aladdin to me, to be totally honest. It is in Cairo. There's a main character who is essentially like a pickpocketer or street rat kind of thing. And then all of a sudden she meets someone who helps her realize that magic is real. And I, that just sounds so interesting to me. And the setting. I will read basically anything set in Egypt. I'm a total sucker for that. It's just so interesting and, like, so, especially for me in Canada, it's just, like, a super foreign place. And I'm like, I, you could tell me anything about that country, and I believe it. It just sounds so cool. I'm also going to try and read Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This book, I, I'm kind of ashamed to say I've never actually read it. To be fair, at least it didn't get published before I was born. That happens for a few books. So I really just have no excuse for those ones. I'm really, really interested in reading this book because there is a book coming out later on in the year. I think it's in March called The Wicked Deep. And it's supposed to be a, a mashup of a couple different books, including Practical Magic. I've loved the other books that it's being referred to as a mashup of. But I was just like, I should probably read Practical Magic to know exactly what I'm getting myself into. So I'm really, really curious to start this. I know that there are like two sisters and like they think or like the town thinks they are kind of witches. I think it's like in Salem, Massachusetts. And it just sounds really, really cool. And it's been like, uh, people look at me funny when they say I've never read it. So I feel like I should just get on it. I am so, so excited to read this one. The Woman Who Smashed Code by Jason Fagone. This is a nonfiction book. And I read this, I saw the cover for it and just saw the title and was like, that is something I'm going to read. And then I read the summary. I was like, that sounds amazing. So it is the story of a woman named Elizabeth Smith. She was a Shakespearean educator during like World War One, and, and she essentially just starts like, she, I think she's like, a she was rounding up like gangsters and that kind of stuff before that. And then like during World War Two or something like that, she starts, you know, breaking code or something like that. It's just like, I, I, every part that I've seen of it, the cover, the title, the summary, I was like, how is this book not more hyped up? So I am reading it for sure this month. I'm so excited about it. It just sounds so interesting. I love just women in historical stories as well. But as well as like, I love stories that take place and impact world wars, but it's not just fighting. Like there's the violence and everything that, you know, honestly, I just, I don't like reading tons of that stuff. There was just so much going on in the background of everything of World War One and World War Two that like, I just want to see that. And we had people that did amazing things that just never get the credit for what they did or like, and on top of that, you know, they get abused after, after they've helped everyone, you know, like Alan, was it turning the guy who created the computer? You know, he was like, just, we did horrible things to these people. So I want to make sure that I do my due diligence and, and learning about these people and remembering all the amazing things that they did for us. This book was recommended to me by my friend Meg and she's been harassing me to read it. So I ordered my copy through the library and hopefully I really enjoyed it. It's called An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. All I know is it takes place in Spain and there's a musketeer and there's like people trying to assassinate or kill other people and people trying to defend everyone. But my friend Meg said it was super interesting and she actually thought it was kind of a little bit refreshing. I'm really, really curious to give this one a go. It sounds really, really cool. I want to make sure that I read Fatty Likes this month. That is a book by Christy Jordan Fenton, I believe her name is. It is the story of an Inuit girl, her life, how she comes out of the residential schools. And I am just so curious about this. Like we read the horror stories of the residential schools and we've seen the like after effects in life. But, you know, like every story is a little bit different. And Inuit people are generally in northern Canada. I live in like technically northern Canada, but it's only about halfway up. There are people that live like almost in the North Pole in Canada. So I am just so curious to see, you know, what this book 
does to me. I remember reading passages of it before and it hurt my heart and I've heard nothing but heartbreaking things about it. So this way, you know, part of my 2018 goal was to read a book with an Indigenous character or by an Indigenous author. So I am starting it off with a heartbreaking bang probably with with this one. And the last book that I plan on reading this month is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by, by Theodora Goss, I think it her name is. This book just sounds so weird and touches on so many different aspects of history and like literacy and like the literary world that I've been interested in that like I feel it's either going to be an abomination of a book or one of my favorite books of all time. There's a main character whose parents have died and she has no money and then there is a bounty out for the head of one of her father's I think it's like her father was Dr. Jackal and then there's a bounty out for a guy named Mr. Hyde who was one of her father's friends and she figures you know if she can get this bounty then she can support herself but then she meets Hyde's daughter and then there's like Sherlock Holmes gets involved and then there's like Frankenstein characters and stuff it just sounds amazing or horrible and I don't know which one and my friend Amanda recommended it to me so I'm gonna give it a go and I have really high hopes for it so that is my January TBR. Let me know in the comment section down below what you have planned to read this month. Make sure to check the description box down below for all of the links to books as well as all of my social media links. If you follow me, I will follow you back.